Hello dearies, I'm so pleased that you are unopposed <laughs> to coming back week after week for these sessions on how to manage your menopause your way successfully. We are in the midst of a big unit on endometrial uterine cancer that began with video number 320. And here we are at video number 331 ready to discuss all your management options for preventing it. The structure for each unit of this education always consists of teaching you everything you need to know about the disease before presenting your management options for it. And that way you won't decide on a management option that can't possibly accomplish your goals. So now that I've laid all the groundwork for endometrial uterine cancer, today I'll give you some principles pertinent for preventing it. And then I'll give you individual videos for each category of management options, which include diet, lifestyle and exercise, herbs, hormone replacement therapy, and mechanical options. I'll be skipping vitamins, minerals, and supplements for this unit because there's nothing available in that category for preventing endometrial uterine cancer or precancer. Once again, I think it's always best to get the basic principles first and then focus on the specifics. That's why this video is really important. In my book, all of this material is in chapter 31, regardless of whether you have the first edition or the second edition. Whenever I think about principles, I envision a headmaster with his or her stick, because these are the absolute rules. They are the lessons of headmasters. So today, I'll delineate the headmaster rules or principles of preventing endometrial uterine cancer. These will be the principles you need to apply no matter which category of options you choose to use. And I think the most logical way to approach this is to reflect back on the risk factors for endometrial uterine cancer that I listed in video number 322. They were being old, fat, and female. And then in video number 323, you learned that estrogen is an absolute cause of endometrial uterine cancer. So let's use that list of risk factors and this causative agent to address our principles for preventing endometrial uterine cancer. Because they serve as somewhat of a mirror or reflecting pool of your management options. It's kind of like that mirror, mirror on the wall phenomenon, or in this case, in my hand, mirror, mirror in my hand. And regardless of where your mirror is, management options are a reflection of your risk factors. So the first risk factor is being old in age. Now, any headmaster would tell you to act your age, and that's a good principle for most things, but it works against you for purposes of your endometrial uterine cancer risk. Still, you're stuck with it. I mean, look in the mirror. If you ask mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? It will not be you who is the fairest of them all. <laughs> you're old. <laughs> Sorry. Or maybe you're not old, but I am. <laughs> and based on your old age, the mirror will tell you that you're likely to get endometrial uterine cancer, not that you're likely to prevent it. So age is not one of the principles you can use for management. Next is fat. If being fat is a risk factor for endometrial uterine cancer, then anything you do to decrease your fat will decrease your risk. If you look in the mirror and you see that you're fat, you need to do something about it because the mirror doesn't lie. And if you're so depressed that you don't want to look in the mirror at all that you, and you avoid it, then you're in real, real trouble. Of course, a good headmaster would force you to stand in front of the mirror and stare at yourself for a good long time. <laughs> In any case, any management option that decreases your fat will decrease your risk. That's a basic principle that will serve you well. 
The third risk factor is being female. Now this, of course, is directly due to the fact that to have a uterus in the first place, you have to be female. And while looking in the mirror will readily reflect the fact that you're female, there's nothing you can do about that either. And I hope that a good headmaster would tell you to be proud of it and celebrate your femininity. <laughs> but by far, the biggest focus of your management will target the causative agent of endometrial uterine cancer, which is estrogen. And that's what will consume the majority of this tutorial. Now, the principle is that estrogen definitely causes endometrial uterine cancer. But as simple and straightforward as that sounds, there are many nuances and caveats that are not so apparent. So I want to make absolutely sure you understand what matters with regard to estrogen. And the first thing I want to do is to make some critical distinctions pertaining to estrogen itself so that you don't use misinformation to prevent endometrial uterine cancer. And there are a lot of inclusions and a lot of exclusions when it comes to the specifics about estrogen. The first distinction is that we are not talking about estrogen dominance. That is a meaningless and misplaced term. It was created as a marketing term, not a valid medical term. Ever since Dr. John Lee of the Alternative Community created this term to scare women away from estrogen and to promote progesterone, women tend to focus on the ratio of estrogen to progesterone, and then they assume that if they have more estrogen than progesterone, it's bad. That is just about the looniest thing ever. Stop and think about it. Do you think Papa Bear, whose hormone is testosterone, is testosterone dominant? Of course he is. And if he is, do you think he has a problem with it? Of course he doesn't. He's supposed to be testosterone dominant. He's Papa Bear. He doesn't blame testosterone for causing everything that ails him. And progesterone is the hormone in support of pregnancy. So if a developing fetus or baby bear is under the influence of progesterone dominance, do you think it's a problem for baby bear? Of course not. Progesterone is what protects baby bear during gestation. It would be absolutely ludicrous for baby bear to have an objection to progesterone dominance when progesterone is the very hormone that makes it possible for baby bear to survive in utero. Well, you are mama bear, and your hormone is estrogen. Estrogen is the very essence of being female. So why in the world would you expect to be anything but estrogen dominant? What else would you be? Your levels of progesterone are higher than your levels of estrogen for about one third of every menstrual cycle and during early pregnancy. And the rest of the time, your estrogen is higher. Here's a graph of estrogen and progesterone during your menstrual cycles. In this graph, the red line is estrogen and the blue line is progesterone. And here's a graph of estrogen and progesterone during pregnancy. In this graph, the dark blue line is estrogen and the green line is progesterone. The point is that episodes of estrogen dominance are a normal aspect of your female hormone cycles and pregnancies. So stop using the term estrogen dominance to imply something negative or undesirable. In fact, stop using it completely. When you use that term, you are demonstrating that you are a victim of marketing and it will definitely lead you astray. The second distinction I want to make about estrogen is that we are talking about estrogen excess. As you saw in the two graphs I just showed you, estrogen is always balanced by progesterone. Take a look at the graph of a menstrual cycle again. Here, estrogen and progesterone take turns being the highest 
serum level hormone. On average, they balance out. Elevations in one are compensated by later elevations in the other. Now look again at the graph of pregnancy. Here you see that both estrogen and progesterone rise exponentially, but they are still relatively balanced. Neither one of them exists all by itself, so neither one is excessive. So the key to estrogen causing endometrial uterine cancer is limited to what we call estrogen excess. Estrogen excess is estrogen levels in excess of progesterone levels such that the effect of estrogen on your uterus is not canceled by the effect of progesterone on your uterus. So going back to what I taught you in the first endometrial uterine cancer video, which was video number 320, estrogen does this to your endometrium. Progesterone does this to your endometrium. What matters is that you don't have this all the time. And it doesn't matter whether you alternate between this and this and this and this, or whether you just maintain this. Either way, it's fine. As long as you balance the fertilizer, which is estrogen, with the lawnmower, which is progesterone, you prevent endometrial uterine cancer. So that brings us to the third distinction pertaining to estrogen, which is something called unopposed estrogen. Unopposed estrogen is any instance in which you receive any source of estrogen only without receiving any source of progesterone. Notice that I use the phrase any source for both estrogen and progesterone. And that's because the source could be anything from food to herbs to hormone replacement therapy. The key to prevention of endometrial uterine cancer is to avoid the effect of unopposed estrogen on your endometrial lining. Why? Because any source of unopposed estrogen causes this and constitutes the fertilizer all by itself, which makes the grass grow. And if the endometrial lining gets thicker and thicker, and never gets mowed. It turns into this. And that's what constitutes endometrial uterine cancer. So, a good headmaster would make you stick to the principles of balance between estrogen and progesterone. And of all the factors, this one is by far the most important. Regardless of how old you are, regardless of how fat you are, regardless of how feminine you are. The balance between estrogen and progesterone is the balance between thick and thin. You know, it is said that a good friend sticks with you through thick and thin. Well, endometrial uterine cancer is not a good friend. It's just the opposite. It disappears in thin times, and it appears only in thick times, and that's no friend. So to summarize, regardless of how old, fat, or feminine you are, the most important principle for preventing endometrial uterine cancer is balancing estrogen and progesterone. You must avoid excess estrogen and unopposed estrogen. Simple, isn't it? Yes, it is, in theory. But starting next week, you'll see that it may not be as simple in practice. All right, students. Class is dismissed until next week. Be sure to subscribe to both my newsletter and my channel before you leave today. And then go to menopausetaylor.me to schedule a consultation. After that, you can follow me in your free time on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Bye!